It was a crisp, clear, beautiful Sunday morning, February 10, 1991. And no, I'm not a savant, I don't remember the weather, it's just that I remember that day, and I went back and looked and figured out the date. That day, I was home, and as usual, my grandfather had gone out on a morning walk with my dog, Fulano. Fulano was a uh, rescue border collie a dog that I think I love more than any of my siblings. I have five siblings. So it was my pet. It, for me, it was my, my pet. I take care of him and all that. So he went with him on leash, like any suburban Venezuelan uh, town. Dogs are, you know, roam, let free to roam around, do whatever they want. Have fun, be happy. I was reading at home, and suddenly I hear my grandfather rush into the house crying, out of control. Like he couldn't, he couldn't say what he, what was happening. He was uh, 80 years old at that time, and uh, eventually he managed to say that Fulano had been hit by a car. And immediately I thought, okay, where, where was he? So I just ran out of the door as quickly as I, I could, follow the route that he always takes. And then in my head, I was thinking about, about Fulan. I was thinking about my dog. Was he suffering? Was he dead? Was he still uh, in pain? Was he limping? Was he, you know, I could not, uh, I had all these thoughts, right? That's normal. I ran for like a mile, eventually I looked around, went back, and finally I saw him. He was laying there on the side of the road, on a top of a green patch of grass, still wet with morning dew, and he was not moving, he was not breathing, he was gone. I, I didn't know anything about what happened, if the car stopped, if the, what, what happened. I just knew that it was hit by a car. So immediately I thought, well, I, this, this is it. It's gone. There's nothing for me to do. I'm, you know, not crying, very well composed. I approached him and confirmed that he was actually dead. He wasn't really. And then I picked it up. And when I picked it up, it hit me like a brick. He was still warm. He was still warm. He was alive five minutes ago. So that I, it was something that I didn't expect to happen. That sensation of, of his body still being warm. I just thought, okay, he's dead. It's like a cold, dead thing. But no, he was still warm. So I started walking back home as I was holding it. And then I started crying. Of course, I'm a human being and I have feelings. But I was crying for two things. The first one is the obvious. My pet, my love dog, the one that uh, waited for me when I came back from college and jumped up uh, five feet uh, when I got home. He was there when I was feeling sad to give me company. I was there for him when some female dog in the neighborhood had broken his heart. <laughs> and uh, he was a lovely dog. But the second reason why I was crying was that back at home, I knew my grandfather was really troubled. i never seen him like that. i never seen him cry like that, not being able to talk. So that feeling of my grandfather's well-being over, overwhelmed me. And, and that was really making me cry. I, was, I just started thinking about my grandfather and his well-being and what he was feeling and the sense of guilt and all that. When I got home, uh, we managed to calm him down, and uh, I started thinking about, <laughs> about that second reason why I was crying, and the importance of that. And then I'm going to read a quote that my mom wrote on an email, maybe a few, like two weeks after Fulano had died. It's just a, a sentence of a long email that she wrote. She said, Fulano was gone that day which was meant to be his last day. And in all of our eyes, a tear built up. And we all felt a big guilty, we all felt a big guilty of not reciprocating the love he had given us. The 
losses are, when we have losses in our life, are usually very, they're life changing, changing. They can take us to the bottom of a lake, but they can make, make so, eventually they will let us go. They will let us go and as we swim to the surface to grasp from, for fresh air, and we come out, we see the world different. We realize that, that life is not made of the things that we had and we don't have anymore. That life is made of the things that we still have. In my case, it was my grandfather. So the death of Fulano made me realize how much I love my grandfather and how much I care for him. And the little time that I still had to enjoy with him, playing chess games, waking early at 5 in the morning to exercise, go out to the beach with him, go out on hikes with him, all the things that I get to do, I still was able to do with him. So fellow Toastmasters, yes, don't let the warm feel of fresh breath remind you of the people that you still love and are still around you.